Hey everybody, my name is Dean. I'm a board certified music therapist working in North Carolina in oncology. And uh, I use a lot of technology in uh, my on-site as much as I do virtual care visits. And um, I wanted to take a moment today to talk with you about VSTs or plugins, right? You may have heard plugins before you've heard VST, but chances are you've heard both if you spent any amount of time in DAWs or digital audio workstations. And a VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology. And it's a virtual rendering of uh, recording studio hardware. And it's a really cost-effective way to get a lot of really cool sounds in uh, to your personal composition or into the work you're doing um, with with patients or residents or you know, the people who you treat in music therapy. Um, so um, I, I want to just demo some of the VSTs that I use a lot today. Um, and then in another video, I want to show you how to go about installing VSTs and then ultimately using um, digital audio workstations in a telehealth environment and what that means for like VSTs and how that works. Um, so there's, there's two types of uh, VSTs that I really use, and those are instruments and effects. So uh, I'm going to give you a couple examples of uh, instruments and then one effects that I really like uh, to use. I use more plug-in instruments than I do effects, um, but there's there's applications for both, uh, depending on what the need is. I do a lot of receptive methods uh, with oncology patients, uh, especially in the virtual care world, so uh, creating rich sound environments is important to uh, the work that I do. So, uh, and, and a, a free and very robust um, plug-in is uh, Labs made by Spitfire Audio. So before you get to the point where I'm going to um, take you uh, today, you'll need to download uh, Labs from Spitfire Audio. So uh, I have Ableton uh, pulled up here, and this is pretty much how everybody's Ableton looks. You know, you got this left-hand column here, and then you open up a, a subfolder of whatever you choose over here. So you'll want to go to plugins, and then you'll find whichever one you need. So I'm using a Mac uh, operating system, so you'll have audio units, which is specific to Mac, um, but you'll find more for VST. Now it's getting to a place where if you find a VST, chances are you'll find the audio unit too but a lot of the free ones are VST or VST3 right here. So let's go back up to labs here. So to use a plugin in Ableton specifically, you will drag that VST into one of these MIDI channels. And then you'll wait a second because labs is so robust, it takes it a second to open up. And then there you go. So within this, you have how much it's eating up your computer here, how much CPU it's using, disk, and then memory, and then how many voices, which is essentially how many, um, how many notes are being played at one time. And then uh, you have your MIDI, MIDI channels over here, tuning, panning, and then volume. Uh, so I always bump the volume up a little bit, usually all the way, because uh, I like to control the volume on the channel. Um, you have volume here and expression here. And a lot of times expression is just for dynamics. And then this is uh, on most instruments in labs. You click this and then you can change whatever it is. So let's give this a listen. So it's a soft piano. So let's give it some reverb. And I'm actually going to turn that volume down. And I love this one because you can actually hear the... I don't... 
forgive me, I don't know the technical term for this piece inside the piano, but, you know, it's like, it's not the damper, uh, like the dampening felt, but you can hear like the moving pieces within the piano, like the hammers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so then you click over here, and I've downloaded all of the packs that are available for labs. Anytime I get an email from Spitfire Audio saying that there's a new labs pack, I'm going to download it. It's free, and it's really high quality. So I highly recommend this one. I mean, there's a reason I'm talking about this one first. Uh, I, like I said, I do a lot of soundscaping type things, and maybe I didn't say that, so I'm saying it now. So a lot of these sounds are going to be kind of ambient. Um, here's one that I've starred, a harmonic cello. Let's give this one a listen. Yeah, I like that. So you can uh, change the reverb attack and release. So attack is if I hit the hit the key, how quickly is the sound going to be introduced? So if we take that all the way down, it's all the, it's immediately going to be like the full sound, but let's say I move it up to one and a, about one and a half seconds. It kind of settles into the sound. Um, I'm gonna get, let's see, so strings, this is another one, just, uh, it takes a second to load this one. There we go. So it's an ensemble. So you notice the sound was clipping the disc memory here. Uh, I was clipping because there's so much going on in the sound. My computer was having a hard time uh, dealing with that and creating uh, this video. And you'll have to apologize for that crackling noise that you just heard. I'll, I'll have to apologize for the crackling noise you just heard. And that's one of the things that I run into with pulling audio from here and putting it into the broadcasting software that I use to create the recording. So it's all using the same resources and sometimes they get backed up. So these are the strings. Another one that I really like um, is the choir. And we'll give that a second to load because it takes, it takes a while. And one of the things that I like about it, I like to put, well, I'll, let me let you hear it as is, and then I will give you an opportunity to hear um, a really cool way to use it. Um, so usually, digital uh, voices don't have this quality. Like to me, this sounds amazing. Welling, right? It goes into it the longer you hold it down. The one thing that I like to do with this is bump up the reverb. Make the attack a little longer. Add a lot of decay. Sustains already all the way up. And then add a little bit of release. Now check this out. I'm very, very, I'm not holding down the keys for very long for this. And it's not the same thing as holding down the sustain pedal. What this allows you to do is play more notes and have them blended without using as many resources. So if I bump that decay up a lot, I mean, if I hit the note very staccato-y, you get a very long extension on that. So the choir is really good. Um, any of my lo-fi fans out there, I want you to check this sound out. Um, and then I'll move on to the next thing. So they just came out with the synth pads. This is all within the last three months. The synth pads came out. Synth pad number 0004 is my favorite. So one reason I love this is you can get this nice kind of drone in the background. And then you get melody 
a lot of times if you're using drone sounds, the melody can be lost within the same instrument, right? Of course, you can create a drone and then let it, you know, go and then uh, add another channel for melody. But this one, you can do it kind of all within the same instrument. So Labs is all over there. Percussion, guitar, tuned percussion, brass, vocals, which we did a little bit of, experimental, strings. They have a lot of different sounds. And I have to create a favorites file or, or starred so they have it because th there's just so many cool sounds that they have. Um, it's hard not to favorite all of them. Okay, so uh, the next one I wanted to show you is uh, Centronic. So I'm just going to drag that right over the Labs channel just so you can see if you want to switch instruments quickly, you can. Uh, that's one great thing about uh, Ableton. All right, so Centronic is made by, um, let's see, golly. Um, if you Google Centronic, you'll be able to find it. I, uh, honestly, it's, it's left me at this point. But you have all of these VSTs that are essentially remakes of some of these classic electronic pianos, synthesizers, you know, beatboxes. You got all these really cool sounds in one VST. So this is the free version of Centronic. And it is loaded. I think this is all the instruments in there. If you click more sounds, it'll bring you... Okay, so IK Multimedia is who does Centronic. So you'll want to go here and uh, navigate your way um, to Centronic. So you can see Centronic Deluxe is like $400. But there's also a Centronic Free. And for what we do as music therapists, I'd be willing to bet the free one is enough. So let me show you a little bit about how you can use Centronic. So what you'll do is you'll double click on one of these sounds. I'm just going to do the analog pad here. And if you click on this icon up here, it'll give you the knobs so you can manipulate the sound. So well, let me hit record so I can arm the track so you can hear it. So if you adjust the knobs... So this is on the modulation. So you got the different types of waves here. I like random. So that's just one example. There's tons here. I'm just going to click on a random one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, glisten light. So some of them are kind of abrasive sounding, um, but it is a lot like Labs in that it is a package of instruments. So the VST itself is a package and not just a single instrument. That's all I wanted to illustrate, and Labs and Centronic are full of really great instruments. The other thing I wanted to show you uh, was single instruments like the harp. Check this out. So this is, you can see the name there. <clears throat> and if you can't, it's uh, all one word, Ethereal Winds Harp 2. You can adjust, you know, the attack and the decay, sustain and release, reverb, panning, left and right, um, just outside of what you can already do in Ableton in regards to the mixer and the effects, but the envelope over here with the attack, decay, sustain and release, you know, that's instrument specific. Um, so this is one of the instruments that it, this plugin is only dedicated to this harp sound. Um, and lastly, I want to show you uh, one that 
Uh, well, there's two. Okay, so this one, uh, you know what? Let me get a sound going on here. Um, so just for the sake of having something on on the background, I want, this is a a plugin or a VST called Isotope Vinyl. So if you just search for Isotope Vinyl, you'll get that. And you can add a custom vinyl effect to whatever track you want. That's a MIDI track. You cannot add this to audio tracks. So um, if I add, oh, you hear that? Mechanical noise. So let's see. So you get a little bit of skipping in there. So you see here, you can choose a number of scratches. So let's go with no scratches. Stereo, and then you can change the year too. Check this out, 1930. Talk about cool. And then you can change the way that it's, the sound is warped. You know, if you want a high pass or a low pass. And then you can choose your RPMs here. Very cool for effects. And then this one, you can spin it down. Check this out. Very cool. At least I think so. I keep talking about the things that I'm doing are very cool. You might not think they are. Um, I might just think they're cool, which is why I've agreed to talk about them. <laughs> so you can hear it still going on in the background. So I actually have to click this little yellow button here to turn that plugin off. And that's something you have to do every time. Um, the uh, last one I'm going to talk to you about is... Uh, so Voxingo makes these really cool effects. The one that I like the most is old school verb, all one word, old S-K-O-O-L school verb, as in reverb, which you can now hear on my voice. Um, let's see. So I'm, I got all this opened <laughs> down here. I'm going to close that. So this is Voxingo verb. And... I'm going to turn it off for a second. So you can change all of these reverb parameters versus on Ableton, I have this one send, or if, what, depending on what version of Ableton, you could have many. Um, but if I want to, I can adjust reverb here. Um, and there are other settings here that you can use to adjust reverb if you actually click on the send channel here you can adjust the reverb that way. Or you can get something like old school verb and adjust it. So let's turn it back on and you can change this to where there's like no low and then you can make it to where there's a lot of low, a lot of low here, just in the reverb. And then you can kind of muffle it if you want with the dampening. Um, the width is like the stereo width of it. Time. So I could be in a big space. Or I could be in a very small space, depending. So you noticed I moved that up for a big space and not a lot at all um, for time. And then this, I, I take that back. This is space. This is time. They're always together, right? Even not in reverb, space and time. Pre-delay. And then you got your EQ over here. So I like it because it's, it's a, to me, it's a little more straightforward. You know, as a novice, um, I can really uh, uh, make quick adjustments. And a lot of times that's what you need with this. So thank you um, for 
watching this video, um, that about sums it up. I just showed you a couple different instruments or packages of instruments and some effects. And uh, ultimately, I just kind of wanted to scratch the surface of what are VSTs or what are plugins and what do they look like and how can they expand what you do uh, in the virtual and on site world when you're using a digital audio workstation to provide music for people. Uh, plugins are super helpful and they're cost effective. So remember that when you're looking for a new sound, and a lot of times they're so customizable, even more so than acoustic instruments are. And in a digital environment, you just have so much more control over your sound. Um, I highly encourage you to go check out any uh, places where there are free VSTs like Spitfire Audio with Labs or IK, Media, multi, IK Multimedia with Centronic. And, um, I mean, even if you just Google free VSTs, um, you'll get uh, a, a lot to choose from, and you'll know the ones that are kind of not so great versus the high-quality ones. And there are websites dedicated to um, free VSTs. Um, I have one here. Uh, I had one here. Um, maybe I'll link it uh, with the video uh, where there are just a lot of different um, VST sounds uh, based on old electronics, kind of like Centronic, but someone actually took the time to record everything needed to create a VST for uh, these older instruments. And they're free and they're close enough. So um, if you're like me and you're kind of a stickler for sound, um, You'll want to have a lot of different sounds in your arsenal, and VSTs are a really good way to do that. So, uh, again, thank you uh, for checking me out today on Technook uh, for VSTs, and I'll catch you again very soon. Take care.